Hello. In this Java tutorial, we're going to be tracing out the code for a selection sort. There are many ways to implement a selection sort, but the code we're using will be adapted from the curriculum for the AP Computer Science A class. Before watching this video, you're going to want to be familiar with the selection sort algorithm. To learn about that, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Let's start by bringing up the code. Here we've got our selection sort method. We've got our outer for loop which traverses the list. We only go through list.length minus 1 for the outer loop because on a selection sort, the last index will be automatically sorted. Whenever we start at a new part of the unsorted list, we will set the min index equal to the beginning of the unsorted portion of the list. This internal loop here We'll look for smaller values in the unsorted portion, and then if it finds a smaller value, it will set min index equal to that index. After we've found the smallest value in the unsorted portion of the list, we will use these three lines of code to swap out the values in the first index in the unsorted portion and the index in min index. We see that the selection sort has a list parameter, so we're going to create a list variable and have it point at an unsorted list of size 5. Since this entire list is unsorted, we're going to change the background to red. As portions of this list become sorted, we'll change those index backgrounds to green. Now we're going to start off at the top of the method. We'll declare j as equal to 0. That's because j is pointing at the first index in the unsorted portion of this list. Next, we'll check is j less than list.length minus 1. Since arrays don't change size, we can calculate list.length minus 1 is 4 and just leave that value there for the continued run of the program. We evaluate this to true so we can continue on through the outer for loop. We set min index equal to j. We always start by setting min index equal to the first index of the unsorted portion of the array. This internal for loop will then begin looking for a smaller value in the unsorted portion of the array. So we'll set k equal to j plus 1. We're going to check is k less than list.length, because we have to check through the remainder of the list. In this case, list.length will always be 5. k is less than 5. So now we check is list index k, which is pointing at a 2, smaller than list min index, which is pointing at a 3. It is, so we're going to set min index equal to k. Next, we get to the end of the internal for loop, and we increment k by 1. k is now pointing at index 2. We check, is k less than 5? It is, so we can continue the internal for loop. We check, is list index k, which is pointing at a 7, less than list min index, which is pointing at a 2. This is a false statement, so we skip this line of code and go to the end of the internal for loop, where we increment k by 1. We check, is k still less than 5? It is. So we check, is list index k less than list min index? It is, so we move min index over to k. We get to the end of the internal for loop and increment k by 1. Then we check, is k still less than 5? It is. So we continue the internal loop. We check is list index k smaller than list min index? It is. So then we set min index equal to k. We get to the end of the for loop and increment k by 1. We see k is now pointing out of bounds. We check is k less than 5? k is no longer less than 5. So we terminate the internal for loop. These next three lines of code we'll swap the value that j is pointing at, j being the first index in the unsorted portion of the array, with the value min index is pointing at. Min index is pointing at the smallest value in the unsorted portion of the array. So we start by setting temp equal to list index j. So now temp equals 3. Then we set list index j equal to list min index. So index j gets set to 0. And then finally, we set list min index equal to temp. So these two values are now swapped. We've reached the end of the external for loop. 
So now we change index 0 over to sorted. Then we increment j to 1. So j is now pointing at the new beginning of the unsorted portion of the list. We check, is j less than 4? It is. So we can continue another run through the internal for loop. We set min index equal to j. Then we use our internal loop to see if we can find any smaller numbers. So we set k equal to j plus 1. We check, is k less than 5? k is less than 5. So we continue the internal loop. We check, is list index k less than list min index? It is not. So we skip this line of code and finish off our cycle of the internal for loop. Then we increment k by 1 to 3. Then we check, is k less than 5? It is, so we continue the internal for loop. We check, is list index k less than list min index? It is, so we're going to set min index equal to k. Then we get to the end of the internal for loop and increment k by 1. We check, is k still less than 5? It is, so we continue. We check, is list index k less than list min index? It is not, so we skip this line of code. Next, we increment k by 1. We notice that k is now pointing out of bounds. We check, is k still less than 5? It is not. So we terminate the internal loop, and then we'll swap the values in index j with index min index. We set temp equal to list index j. Then we set list index j equal to list min index. Then we set list min index equal to temp. Now that we've reached the end of the external for loop again, we can mark index 1 as sorted. We'll go back to the top of the external for loop, increment j by 1, so now j equals 2. We check, is j still less than 4? It is, so we continue. We set min index equal to j. We set k equal to j plus 1, and check, is k still less than 5? It is. So we check, is list index k smaller than list index min index? It is, so we set min index equal to k. Next, we reach the end of the internal for loop, and we increment k by 1. We check, is k still less than list.length? It is, so we continue. We check, is list index k smaller than list min index? It is not. So we skip this line of code and go to the end of the internal for loop. We increment k by 1. We see again k is out of bounds. We check, is k less than 5? It is not, so we terminate the internal for loop. And we will swap the values in j and min index. We set temp equal to list j. We set list j equal to list min index. And then we set list min index equal to temp. Next, we get to the end of the external for loop and then we mark index 2 as sorted. We increment j by 1 to 3. We check, is j still less than 4? It is. We set min index equal to j. We set k equal to j plus 1. We check, is k still less than 5? It is, so we continue. We check, is list index k smaller than list min index? It is. So we set min index equal to k. We get to the end of the internal for loop and increment k by 1. We see k is out of bounds. We check, is k less than list.length? It is not. So we terminate the internal for loop. Then we'll swap the values that min index is pointing at and that j is pointing at. We set temp equal to list j. We set list j equal to list min index and we set list min index equal to temp. Since we've reached the end of the internal for loop, we can now mark index j as sorted. Next, we'll go back up to the top of the external for loop and increment j by 1. We check, is j still less than 4? It is not, so we terminate the external for loop. It may appear that we've left the last index unsorted. However, in a selection sort, the last index will be automatically sorted. Now we've completed an entire run-through of the selection sort. For more information on the selection sort, please click on this link 
or type Selection Sort Wikipedia into Google and choose the first result. To see the next video in this curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.